Welcome back to the final day uh, of one year, Yeah, uh, at least a year, maybe even a little over that, of online devotions. Uh, we've been going through so many verses, and then the whole New Testament picking up verses from every book of the Bible in the New Testament. And, uh, and now we're closing with the second to last chapter in the Bible, but it paints this beautiful picture for us. Uh, and we just had to end with this, and we think it's very appropriate. And the words that we're ending with, um, we really want you to read further, but we're ending with these words for a reason and a purpose, because there's no better way to end this final devotion than the last reading closing with these words. Mm -hmm. We'll get to those in just a second. Let's open up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to dig into chapter 21. Lord God, we thank you uh, for everything in the book of Revelation, even the stuff that we don't understand. But Lord, for all of the things that we can understand, we've already looked at three verses, and I think we can understand those. And so Lord, I pray that as we look at those, um, you would be at work in our lives. So Holy Spirit, be transforming us. And God, thank you for what you have done for us, that we even have this opportunity to be here, to to be a part of your story. We give you thanks and praise and honor and glory. Speak to us today now as we look at the end of the story, uh, the very end and a beautiful picture um, that we get. And so we ask you to give us wisdom and understanding and speak into our lives. And we ask and pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, we got a few verses here um, because it's powerful stuff. Uh, there's, again, years of sermons here, but we're going to unpack it in, oh, five to seven minutes. <laughs> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And that saddens both of us. Yeah. But we think maybe we don't understand. And I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. Oh, that's amazing. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be any mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. So the, the Christian world... Amen. Knew. Amen. <laughs> That's all you need to say. That's it. So be it. Click. So be it. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. The Christian worldview um, is not about politics or morality or religion. Uh, I'm going to switch gears to talk about the Christian worldview. Have you ever noticed how the most popular plot, the most famous plot... Of, of the stories that the world has loved for all of history and even today, the most famous pot, plot, the most well-known plot is, once upon a time, things were great. And then something happened that threatened to ruin all of this goodness that was over here. But then a hero shows up, usually an unlikely hero. And that hero, at very great cost to himself, saves the day and then at the end, everything is put back together, and they lived happily ever after. Have you ever noticed that that's like the most famous and most well-loved plot? Maybe that's because that's the story that you and I are in. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the plot of the Bible, that's what you see. Things began in a garden with mankind made in, his, in God's image. And God looked at everything that he had made and said, that's really good. Perfect, perfect relationship between... Um, humans and each other. Perfect relationship between humans and creation. Perfect relationship between humans and God. But then our sin, our fall came about and threatened to ruin everything, but an unlikely hero shows up and at great cost to himself saves the day. And then revelation is the, and then they lived happily ever <laughs> after. What we see 
is that there is a story that God is telling. And we have, by our rebellion, threatened to turn that story into a tragedy. And that is the story that we will live out unless we accept God's invitation to be caught back up into his story. That's why he's telling us the ending here, that I am making all things new. Everything looks like it was going to be ruined, but at great cost to myself, I made a way so that everything could be made new. You could be made new. Creation could be made new. Um, God, you were pointing out that the dwelling of God, the dwelling place of God is with man. What awaits us after death is not that we go up to heaven and leave this earth behind and now we're just disembodied souls floating around in heaven. It's a new creation. God comes to be with us, to build this community that he started at the very beginning. This ending is, I mean, we could preach about it for, uh, there's forever. so much here, but I find this really, really encouraging is too small of a word. Um, I'm trying to find other words other than encouraging. This is the ending of the story that you have been invited into. And you don't have to wait till him to make all things new at the very end. He's going to perfectly do that at the end. But this newness of life is offered to you today. And that's what all these devotionals have pointed us to for this past year. That's why we wanted to end with these words. These words are trustworthy and true. Every word out of God's mouth, every word contained in his word is trustworthy and true. And they're, they're the words by which he is inviting us back into this story that has this kind of an ending. Your life can look like this. Your life can be a preview of this ending that's coming. As God's word, his written word and his living word, who is Jesus, as he fills you and he transforms you and he makes you new, you get to be a preview of what's coming for all of creation. And to me, that is... Again, the word encouraging is just way too small. Yeah, it's overwhelming. It's truly overwhelming. It blows our minds and what he has done for us and how we get to be a part of that story. That's so beautiful. This whole thing is a story, and you're a part of that story. Our lives are a part of the story. God uses us and wants us to be involved as he builds and establishes his kingdom here on earth. And so we thank you so much for being a part of these online devotions for over a year now. And we want to encourage you, even though these devotions are ending, these words are trustworthy and true. The one who shares them is, is worthy and he's trustworthy and true. So continue um, to read these words that came from God, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Continue to look at the story, to understand it, and may God transform each of us, be at work in each of us, so that we can build, um, we can be a part of his work and build his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven here on this earth. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, thanks for sharing with us today. Just great stuff. Um, we hope maybe we'll be back one day soon. Uh, but in the meantime, keep reading the word of God and may God be with you. May he strengthen you. May he fill you. The one who is trustworthy and true, may he bless you. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, guys.